Hi everyone, greetings from National Skills Network. Uh, most of you are aware that manufacturing is one of the key sectors and there is a need for skilled workforce in a very big way and somehow we haven't been able to meet that need and uh, there are many initiatives about skilling for the manufacturing sector but then when we talk about manufacturing sector there is also a feeling that we are leaving out a small and medium or micro enterprises which also need a lot of skilled workforce so today we have with us mr ranjan choudhury who is the head partnerships at tcs ion vocational education we will meet him and learn more about uh, manufacturing sector and skill development and what is the requirement and what are the trends and his insights are going to help us learn more about this sector and how we can go ahead especially in the backdrop of the fact that industry 4.0 is something that is going to impact a lot of skilling in this sector so so welcome to this talk sir thank you madhuri uh, always a pleasure to uh, talk to you as always so uh, what you've said is very very right that uh, manufacturing is critical for uh, factor, for for growth in a, any economy and in india i think the uh, if you look at the policy that the government has they are uh, looking at promoting uh, manufacturing led growth and msme as you mentioned can is uh, forms the backbone both of in it being the largest uh, employer and also being the backbone in terms of uh, the manufacturing sector in india per se so uh, msme sector at times there is a lot of uh, what should i say misconception uh, but over the years my perspective is that the msme sector has also evolved Mm. and has to uh, to keep up with the times in fact uh, there was a recent uh, study by uh, the ministry of msme where it was pointed out that uh, to keep up with the trend and the uh, and to be competitive and for the purpose of being productive and efficient uh, the msme sector is also adopting uh new age technologies more efficient production methods and this is also if peer headed by the fact that the new generation of stroke managers they look at changing the entire way that the msme sector uh, has been working and which is a positive trend for india but uh, when you look at this uh, while technology or capital for uh, adopting new production methods can be uh, acquired very easily the greater challenge is in acquiring a skilled workforce who can manage the new age technology and the uh, production methods which come along with adopting uh, the industry 4.0 or iot or you can name any of the new uh, manufacturing methods that have come into force today yeah uh, so so you have already now pointed out the importance of how uh, all these technologies are being adopted and the need for you know uh, increasing the skilled workforce in this sector so uh, now when you look at the supply side or when you look at you know the training institutions and others uh, aren't we still uh, you know not updated ourselves in terms of curriculum let's say for instance the itis or other training institutions uh, so there isn't there a gap and how do we uh, you know make it very agile and uh, accelerate the pace i would say because technology adoption rate is so rapid that you know you don't have much time to catch up so what's your view on this no i think very rightly said uh, but having said that madhuri you would also agree that the iti and the polytechnics that we have possibly the most structured and widespread network 
that we have in the country for uh, training of uh, manpower for industry per se. It is not, yes, while there may be a lag, it is not that uh, the entire sector has been oblivious to the changes that are being, uh, that are being, uh, that is there in terms of requirement uh, from part of employers that is industry. So if you look at it, state governments, DGT, a lot of ITIs, there are a number of them which has now introduced new age programs, you know, the likes of what you said. So it has started. Yes, the pace is a matter of concern, but I think it is there that uh, we uh, in our uh, being from the private sector need to be a bit more, uh, if I may say so, involved to see how the uh, new age programs can be uh, brought uh, to, uh, for, to the fore, whereby such skilling programs are available to candidates for them to take up the certificate and diploma programs such that you know, the MSME sector, the manufacturing sector at large can use uh, their skill sets. So um, uh, TCS Iron, if you were to look at it, TCS Iron, we are very, very cognizant of the fact that uh, uh, training in uh, the manufacturing sector at times can be the most challenging part. And uh, for also for it to be contemporary and to take into account the needs of industry. So we have introduced a number of programs which are uh, catering both certificate and diploma, which are looking at addressing the skill needs in uh, embedded electronics uh, and also in maintenance of uh, mechatronics, uh, mechatronics maintenance, etc. So I think there are a large number of players who are looking at it as is government and polytechnics in increasing, as you said, the supply side. Yeah. Now, considering the background, the rich background and experience you had uh, with the world skills, uh, you know, uh, in your previous role, uh, we thought it would be nice to get a perception about manufacturing industry from you because world skills looks at manufacturing in a much more integrated way where there are different types of uh, skills included. Uh, so is there something you can share about how world skills perceives like you have additive manufacturing, electronics, renewable energy, OEM, food processing, welding, robotics, whole lot of these things are, you know, under the umbrella umbrella of manufacturing. So I feel somewhere we also need to look at the big picture of manufacturing. No, I think that's an excellent question. And uh, to be very frank, uh, world skills uh, as an institution uh, is doing much more than just the biennial competitions that are held every year. So to begin with, uh, they look at uh, while they have uh, over 60 trades, job roles, a lot of them are in the manufacturing and engineering sector. Mm. Uh, one difference that we say, and I think which is very important for a highlight, if I may say so, is the job roles that they have in the manufacturing sector are not very narrow as compared to India. Mm. And I think which is good because when you look at it, the workforce that you need today you need uh, uh, the um, workforce to be multi-skilled, to be able to do rather than to be skilled in a very narrow domain or uh, in a narrow job role. Secondly, when you look at it, world skills, their competitions are based on world skill standards, which are nothing in one way of looking at it. These are global standards. So uh, all the job, job roles are based on standard, based on which they have something called the technical description, which looks at every candidate having a certain knowledge component mm -hmm. to be able to perform the job role 
as uh, required with the required proficiency. And the second component is the skills mm -hmm. or the competencies which they must exhibit, which is then measured in a very transparent manner. So if you look at the entire world skills methodology, which is standards, the training and assessment framework that uh, a number of con uh, countries have adapted and adopted within their own Tibet system. Mm. India also in the last 10 years, uh, we've had a fair degree of success in being able to percolate the competency-based training and assessment right to the district levels, mm -hmm. with the district level, state, regional, and national competitions. Also, uh, through the World Skills competitions, we have in India a large cadre of uh, trainers uh, who are both from ITIs, from the corporate sector, as well as individual professionals who are uh, world-class, Mm -hmm. and are today helping to build uh, the competency-based framework in the country. So I think that was a slightly long answer, but uh, also if you were to look at it, keeping in uh, uh, line with the trends, this particular year, WorldSkills has introduced, like you said, a lot of new job roles, such as additive uh, manufacturing, robot systems integration, Renewable Energy Industry 4.0, all of which I'm very happy to say that India is also taking up. So there is a learning, a trickle-down effect, a cascading, which is there. And uh, if we do it in a more structured manner, I think it will help create the workforce, which is uh, aligned to global standards and global norms. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing the details about uh, particularly the work, uh, the world skills, occupational standards and the job roles. And now, uh, since you already said in India, we are following these and uh, we are also participating in the competitions. At this point I brought in because manufacturing sector also has huge scope for youth to participate in, in terms of competitions. And that's something that builds the aspirational value for manufacturing skills. Uh, now, when you look at the training or the skill development side of it, you've already mentioned ITIs and their curriculum, which is uh, now getting upgraded um, you know, gradually perhaps we'll be reaching there with all the new skills for the new age technologies. Uh, but uh, thanks to COVID and thanks to the kind of situation it created, I think we all got comfortable with blended or digital model of learning as well. So what is your opinion about offering courses in the digital mode, particularly in the manufacturing sector, where let's say you have, uh, for instance, uh, CNC training or additive manufacturing training or training where we feel uh, real hands-on practical experience is most essential. Uh, so how do we go ahead with uh, this model of training for manufacturing related courses? So uh, if you look at it, uh, training for the manufacturing sector is, if I may say so, comparatively uh, a bigger challenge mm. when you look at the services sector. Right. And that is primarily because of the requirement of having in uh, content, quality content, infra trainers, and most importantly, infrastructure. Uh, all of which, uh, only when all of this is aligned, will we have the supply side churning out or producing uh, talent which would have the necessary knowledge, the skill sets, and the competencies to take up, you know, the opportunities that are there. What is commonly termed as being aligned to industry needs. Mm. So uh, uh, we have been, and more so in India, but I would say it is also true across the globe. That has been the learning uh, from all the workshops that I have uh, attended is that there is a 
they, it had already started a shift to blended of digital learning, mm. which got accelerated by the onset of the pandemic. Mm. Uh, it is our belief at TCS Iron that the digital model, that means a blend of physical and digital, is the way forward uh, for uh, uh, VET, not only uh, both for the manufacturing sector and for the services sector as well. And uh, that would address some of the key, that would also have the ad advantage of addressing some of the key challenges that uh, plague uh, or that uh, we are faced with today. So when you have the digital model uh, with academic partners or uh, you know bespoke institutions who are there in technical training, the content that is offered to students is uh, at is industry vetted. We have trainers who are best in class who offer the same set of lectures across and which is accessible to students across the country. The pedagogy is the same, uh, multiple and immersive methods of learning. This combined with hands-on, which happens either on the platform, which can happen for IT courses or BFSI courses or in courses in design, graphic design, etc. But for the manufacturing sector, the key is to tie up with existing uh, infrastructure providers who are, who are there. They, we have excellent training infrastructure all over the country. The challenge is to identify such training infrastructure mm -hmm. so that the hands-on component that the trainees are getting are at par because at the end of the day, the proficiency is only as good as the hands-on skill that they acquire on infrastructure. So at TCS Iron, there's a very rigorous uh, due diligence that is done to identify such uh, infrastructure. And going forward, uh, it is our belief that the blended model is what will allow a quality training, even in the manufacturing sector, to be available across the country. Yeah. I think this is the way to go forward with the combination of the physical and the digital, like you just explained, uh, even in the manufacturing sector, which has a lot of uh, importance on hands-on. And uh, now going forward, uh, do you think that, you know, many ITIs or any other training institutions, they will be able to partner you on this? Uh, I mean, how do we perceive the future for manufacturing, let's say, in the digital mode? Okay, uh, I will right at the outset say that uh, in India, especially in a country as diverse in India, we cannot have one shoe fits all. You know, so there will continue to be multiple, uh, uh, if I may say so, methods mm -hmm. of providing training for the manufacturing sector. As I had mentioned, ITIs and polytechnics are evolving and will continue to evolve. However, at TCS Iron, uh, we began our journey by uh, uh, concentrating on the manufacturing sector and with uh, partners such as NTTF who have been, who are a bespoke name in technical training and have been there for uh, almost six decades. Yeah. We have introduced almost 15 courses Mm -hmm. uh, which are, uh, as I said, in skill sets which are in demand. And we have got interest from a number of private ITIs and polytechnics uh, who would, and skill development institutions who would like to partner with us to offer these courses because these would supplement or complement their existing courses. Also, one other advantage that uh, such uh, institutions see 
is that the courses that we offer are modular and have are aligned to the choice based credit system that the government has announced which allows students to uh, take their learning in a modular fashion and to exit take up work come back and rejoin their you know academic journey so there are several advantages that the tcs iron uh, uh, offers the programs which is through partners like nttf with crisp we are going to be offering manufacturing programs with uh, in uh, madhya pradesh and we are also uh, ta- uh, now in very advanced stages of offering uh, courses which have heis and inis in areas such as uh, ev and renewable energy mm-hmm. so uh, we feel that there is a lot that we can offer to itis polytechnics no, uh, in the manufacturing sector as well as in the it and services sector yeah uh, that's so nice to hear about the road map and also the kind of potential digital model has to reach out to more students because uh, as you very rightly said one model is not enough and in india we need several models to meet the requirements of the manufacturing sector uh, so is there anything else uh, you wish to share with our audience with regard to skilling in manufacturing and uh, connecting it with industry 4.0 okay fair enough i think that's a good question and uh, you know as uh, something which is you know uh, very very challenging is the entire image issue that is there with vet with itis with polytechnics and more so with manufacturing i think uh, with new age technology and industry 4.0 additive manufacturing or robot systems integration all of which are vocational professions i think there is gradually going to be a change in the perception because in some ways such job roles can also be looked at beyond being blue collar yeah. also i think the more role models that we create who are successful by taking up such a uh, uh, new age professions and moving up both the academic uh, pathway as well as having career progression once that becomes evident to students to new learners who want to take it up i think we will have much more success in attracting students who see vocational trades as being aspirational having a good opportunities both in terms of their career as also earning potential it is a journey and i think in some ways all of us whether it is industry academia uh, entities like tcs iron which is bringing a digital uh, you know aspect to learning and also helping uh, uh, with assessments is what is going to make a change uh, to this entire landscape yeah thank you so much i think that change is much needed as we just discussed particularly in this sector and uh, we look forward to all the initiatives from tcs ion and the innovative programs that you are building and we'd be very happy to update our audience as and when uh, these programs are you know launched by tcs ion thank you so much sir Thank you Madhuri for giving me the opportunity. Thank, Thank you. Thank you once again.